Hey, howdy, hello, and welcome to the show. Do you like adventuring through the vast, untamed wilderness? Do you actively defy the laws of physics? Are you at all attracted to the idea of a twerking buck? Well, look no further as we've got the game for you. Welcome to this episode of the Steam Red Light series, the series where we look at Steam's most lowly and controversially rated games to see if they're really as bad as the internet says they are. I'm your host for the day, Smirk. Today's game is called Survival Lost Way, and it was released on February 4th of 2021 as an early access title and is normally priced as a $12 game. It was developed and published by Simple Plan Games, who have no previous release, but instead a name that calls back to the days of one's unadulterated teenage youth. This game has 34 reviews in total, with roughly 20 of those reviews being positive and 14 of those being negative, leaving this game with a mixed rating where only 58% of players recommend the game. Before I get into gameplay footage, the game records poorly, even after playing with my recording settings or changing the game settings from epic to low, so it may not look the best on this video, but it plays well over 60 frames per second on my setup. It's important to note that this is currently an early access title, so I'll be mostly overlooking things that may be considered items of polish or other minute details that I'd assume to be in the finished product. I also am only reviewing this from a single-player outlook, so if you're interested in the multiplayer dynamic, I guess you can just pretend that everything I'm saying has the potential imminent threat of being killed by someone else, in addition to having your house destroyed, your items looted, and your body desecrated. In Survival Lost Way, you play as a nameless character that currently features no customization. You're dropped at a specific location of a decently sized map with the intent of just surviving. The game features some quests to help introduce you to the game, but don't offer any hints to the controls or advice as to how you can execute the tasks. To kind of speed run that bit, let's review the controls and the UI. The controls follow a basic WASD shooter format with some notable exceptions. E is your action button, M opens the map, B activates voice chat for multiplayer games, and Tab opens up the UI list, which from left to right is equipment, skills, crafting, a list of help items, and kits. To explain the latter two, the help items tell you where you can find uncommon items, how to get experience and skills, and what chat commands are. Kits are items that you can claim every few hours to help you survive and look like it's mostly intended to be used by the online player base, but you can request them in single player as well. The only three resources you have to manage for yourself are your health, your hunger, and your thirst. When it comes to crafting and building, you'll require different types of resources. Stone and wood are the basics and can be gotten by using your stone hammer on certain rocks or all types of trees. You can also find these sources on the ground. Wood and stone make up most of the basic structures for buildings. In order to build, you'll have to craft a building hammer, equip it, and then press F. From there you get access to some basic structure items, starting with the foundation and then allowing for things such as doors, stairs, and a floor that doubles as a roof. Some other resources include various types of metal, sulfur, powder, leather, and other knickknacks and stuff. As far as crafting goes in the realm of build stations, there are a few things you're able to make such as beds, furnaces, gardening plots, water collectors, workbenches, storage chests, and more. In terms of items, you're able to make some melee weapons such as bats, axes, or machetes. For firearms, you're able to make a pistol, a sniper rifle, a couple of assault rifles, and a shotgun. Firearms require some pretty uncommon parts and may take some time to find unless you find the whole item while scavenging. There are some other projectile-like weapons like frag grenades, smoke grenades, molotovs, and C4 charges that are craftable and findable as well. In terms of health, I've seen the ailments wound and infected. Wound happens when you take fall damage and causes you to limp. Infected seems to have a specific chance of happening each time you take damage and slowly does damage over time. In the game, you have the ability to heal yourself either with a first aid kit or a bandage, both of which are craftable, found in those kits I mentioned earlier, or are able to be scavenged. Take enough damage and eventually you'll die. If you've placed a bed and tied your spawn point to it, you can respawn there. Otherwise, you seem to respawn next to this village every time. Or at least that's what happened to me. Anyway, that's about all the foundation I think we need to get through, so let's move on to what I liked about this game. What I liked most about Survival Lost Way was the extensive options of crafting available at the current stage of the game. It's very clear the developer prioritized having options available for crafting as opposed to something like the skill tree where it is extremely underwhelming in its current state. I found that for version 0.0.1 .0 there were a lot of things included. Even if the structure options themselves are a little limited in the current state, I felt the overall crafting menu was very robust. Unfortunately, that was the most enjoyable aspect of the game for me, so I'll move on to the things that I didn't like so much. So I like to start with things that are lesser in importance and build up to the great ungoodening. Something that's kind of a small catch-all are the design decisions that were a little unintuitive. For example, having to double-click on skills to get them to level up. There's no tooltip for it, so you may spend a few moments figuring out how to actually skill something up. Similar to that, cancelling a craft is done by right-clicking on it, but there's no button or hint to tell you that that's the way to do it. To go down a list of other strange design decisions really quickly, sticks and coal can't be used as fuel in a furnace, which just seems a little incorrect. The quest UI persisting in the tab screen does end up being kind of obnoxious since it overlays some things. 
Torches can't be put down or put up as a form of light around anywhere, they can only be carried. Finally, you can't move with the map open. These could be things that are intended to be implemented at a later time, so I thought it also might just be helpful to list these things out. Another thing that was a little lame, the points of interest are overall pretty barren. For example, after breaking into the military base and looking around, the loot was pretty disappointing compared to what I could get in either of the villages. The main reason for this is because there's about 20-ish cars in either village, whereas the base has far less scavenging points. I think in my time there, I only encountered three sources of loot, plus the couple of bandits you have to fight. It's just a little risky with a very little reward. The old factory also only has like two sources of loot, yet is like 20,000 square feet or something, so it's just a large, empty space. Then there's the bunker. Disappointingly, there's dozens of buttons and doors that you just can't interact with. And then one path of the bunker just abruptly ends at this black hole that seems unfinished. Oh, and also, I did notice that some other reviews talked about invisible walls. I didn't really run into any of those, but I noticed some points of interest have stairs that you can't really go up. You actually just can't walk up them, you have to jump to go up them. Something else I wanted to bring up as another point, since I mentioned them earlier, were the bandits, as well as the zombies. They're just not very threatening. Zombies can be outrun without actually sprinting, so it's mostly just you walking around without having to worry about getting hit by them. Then there's the bandits. The bandits aim pretty poorly in my experience. If you just do a bit of running around, they're unlikely to hit you. It also doesn't help that anything hostile doesn't recognize you if you don't step right in front of them. With some strange exception in the military base where the bandits just kind of find you. The humanoids are far less intimidating than the animals. If you run into the bear or the wolf, you can't outrun them, so you typically have to fight them. That's mostly alright. I mean, you can't outrun them in real life, so I guess this is accurate. Speaking of enemies, the melee combat system is very splotchy. I think I can really just kind of say everything I need to say with this arrangement of clips. You can just see, it's hard for me to hit them, and it's hard for them to hit me. And by the time one of us dies, I don't think any of us felt any more relieved by the end of it. I mean, there's a couple of places where you can cheese the animals since they don't seem to be able to get through the door frame. I'm pretty sure it has to do with hitboxes, because you have to get really close or even crouch to hit some things, even when trying to cut down trees. It's just really unfortunate that melee combat is really poor, since that would be pretty prevalent in the early game stage of your adventure. Lastly, the thing that I thought was the most ungood part of this game was actually this very easy to use exploit. Now obviously this only works in single player mode, but saving the game and restarting it has a lot of benefits. I've played enough early access in indie games to know that saves are hard to get correctly, so off of a hunch, after I broke my leg seeing if the game had fall damage, I decided to save and reload my game. When I did, I found that my wound was healed, so after testing, I found that reloading also has these effects on the game. The game clock is reset back to day 1 at 1pm. 1 it reloads farmed resources like trees or rocks. It clears your quest progress. It also respawns your enemies. And lastly, it reloads loot containers even after they've been looted. That's a pretty long list of advantages, and while you could say that honest people shouldn't be taking advantage of this, you'd be right. However, that doesn't change that this is still an exploit that should be fixed. The only thing the save system seems to currently save right now is your location, your inventory, and player-made objects. With all these things considered, I think we're ready to move on to the verdict. To highlight this game's strengths, the game has a pretty impressive crafting selection for being so early in its development. To cover this game's weaknesses, the game has a myriad of strange design decisions that make the game slightly more difficult. There's a bunch of mostly empty and otherwise imbalanced points of interest. Half of the aggressive enemies aren't intimidating. The melee combat system has really poor hit detection, and single player instances fail to accurately save the state of the game, which leads to potential exploits. With all things considered, I can't say that I recommend Survival Lost Way. While the game seems to be on the right path and has promise or potential, I can't really factor those things in its review as I'm reviewing the game as it is, and it's simply not ready enough. The developer has pushed one patch so far since I've started working on the review for this game, so they seem like they're on the right track. I'd be happy to re-review this game at a later date after some of the things I've covered are resolved. Well, that about wraps us up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to do the things like like the video, comment your thoughts on the game or the review, follow the social media links in the description below, and subscribe if you couldn't shirk the smirk. If you're feeling generous, hit the bell, and maybe I'll see you next week.
Shake that thing, miss. Can I, can 